You're probably familiar with a laptop, right? It's a small device that you can do pretty much everything you need a computer for. And then when you're done, you can just close the lid, pack it up, and you're off. But have you ever wondered what a laptop would look like if it was... Well, a desktop? Yeah, this is it. The Huawei Mate Station S. Hi, didn't see you there. I was just listening to the new Jabra Elite 85T and they've got an impressive feature list. They've got ANC with a dedicated chip to more efficiently drown out surrounding noise so you can enjoy your music better. They also feature a semi-open design with natural hear through when you need it. And they'll last up to 25 hours with ANC turned on. But the best part, if you want one of these, you won't even need to buy them because we will be giving one pair away. So just leave a comment on this video to be in the running. More details in the description box below. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna get back to this. Okay, before you lose your mind in the comment section below, I, I was honestly confused too, because when I first saw the Huawei Mate Station S, I was like, okay, it's just a, it's just a normal desktop, right? But then the more, the more I looked into it and the more I, I, I discovered things about it, it, uh, it started to feel more and more like a, like a laptop that has been made into like the guise of a desktop. Let me explain. There are two configurations available for the Huawei Mate Station S in Malaysia. You can either opt to buy the computer as a standalone desktop tower for 2,488 ringgit, or you can get this package, which includes a 23.8 inch Full HD monitor, as well as a wired keyboard and mouse set. So with this setup, there isn't actually any difference in like uh, the hardware specs uh, or configuration for the tower itself. So you still get the same kind of specs. The only difference is um, what kind of accessories you get it with, right? So you can either get it just this one or like with this whole thing. So in a way, it's it's less like customizing a PC, more like it's more like when you order lunch, so you can have like either a la carte or like the set meal. As far as specs go, this tower isn't some high-end gaming beast, but I guess the sub 3000 ringgit price tag is a dead giveaway. The Mate Station S features an AMD Ryzen 5 4600G APU with Radeon integrated graphics, 8 gigs of RAM and also 256 gigs of M.2 NVMe SSD storage. The tower is also not some super sealed unibody custom case. There are thumb screws at the back and there's even like a little handle there so you can remove the side of the panel a little bit easier. But the catch here is that opening this panel will actually void your warranty. <laughs> For connectivity, you also get built-in 802.11ac Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0. As far as I.O. is concerned, it's not bad. You get four USB-A ports at the back, two of which are USB 3.2 Gen 1. You also get one HDMI port, a VGA port, a serial port, an Ethernet port, and also a selection of 3.5mm ports for line in, out, and a mic. Up front, there is a single USB-A 3.2 Gen 2 port, a combo headphone jack, and a single USB-C port. So the, the weird thing about this is like um, this USB port, so the, the only USB-C port that you have, the one right in front here, this is actually like a USB 2.0 port, which is like, you know, not very great for, for file transfer like, because, you know, it's very slow. But, so the interesting thing is that Huawei says that this port can actually charge out at 18 watts. So like, if you have the right kind of cable, right kind of phone, you can actually like fast charge your device, which I guess is pretty cool. But if what they wanted was like a charging solution, right? I would have preferred like, I don't know, maybe a wireless charging pad here so I can just put my phone on top of the, the tower or maybe like have the wireless charging pad on like the monitor stand. Because I feel like if you're using a desktop, it makes more sense because you just leave your phone there, right? You don't really want to worry about another cable, especially sticking out the front of your device. So yeah, not really sure why they thought this was the best solution, especially since the only USB-C port. 
As you can see, Huawei sent us the whole set, which will cost you just shy of 3,000 ringgit. And although I think it's a pretty good deal, I have to say that the quality of the products is, um, it's very bare bones, very basic. So yeah, the monitor itself, I mean, this is not like a super great monitor. It's like a very basic kind of viewing experience. Uh, and I guess Full HD at this kind of screen size is okay. It's not super blurry or anything. But then again, this, this reminds me a lot of like the really basic monitors, you know, at like the 400 to 600 range, like the whole bezel setup and the design is like very, very similar. And also like the stand itself is not like super great. So the only thing you can do is like, you can, you can pan up and down. Uh, but you cannot swivel, there is no pivot, you can't push it up and down, so it's like a very basic stand again. But I mean the good thing is that the back here, this is actually a VESA mount so that you can change it to like, a, you know, a standard VESA mount uh, stand if you want to upgrade. Uh, which I guess uh, yeah, is a good thing, you can also wall mount it if that's what you're into. Um, the keyboard and mouse set, I mean, it's also like a very basic kind of setup. It's not anything fancy. I don't get why they, they bundled the wired mouse instead of the wireless one because I actually have like a almost exactly the same design uh, where they used to give free with the laptops when you buy them, um, you know, of this kind of mouse. So I'm not sure why they didn't bundle the wireless one. Uh, the keyboard, I mean, it's again, very basic typing experience. The keys are okay. They're chiclet keys, but they're very mushy, so they don't feel very good to type on. Um, the only benefit is, I guess, they're silent. So yeah, not like don't don't come into this expecting all the accessories to be super premium. I mean, they're not. They're they're basic. They're okay. You know, they're they're usable. So far, the Mate Station S is a lot like a regular desktop. So why did I say that it felt more like a laptop? Well, here are a few reasons. Let's start with that keyboard that I didn't really like. Yes, the keys don't feel great uh, even by laptop standards, but there is one unique button at the corner. In fact, it's actually one of the few reasons why you'd want to get this whole thing as a set rather than just buy the tower. You see, it's actually a fingerprint scanner and a power button combo. Yes, that means you can actually power on the mate station and authenticate to log into it with just a single push of the button. Now, where have we seen that before? Huawei says that it will take about 10 seconds to power on from a fully powered off state, but by our calculations, it seems a little closer to 15 seconds. You will also need to plug the keyboard into this specific port or this feature won't work. Uh, it's not a big deal, but I thought I'd just let you know. That said, one of the benefits of having a desktop over a laptop is often upgradability. But between the warranty sticker, this ugly green PCB and those mustard cables, I'm not sure that Huawei really wants you to be looking in here. But let's say you're a rebel, you're just like, ah, I'm gonna remove the sticker, who cares about warranty, I'm gonna unscrew the side panel and then I'm gonna pop it up, you know, because I wanna upgrade the RAM or add a graphics card. Well, when you get there, you might realize that it's not quite like most other desktops. For starters, if you're trying to upgrade the RAM, uh, in case you couldn't already tell, those are sodium slots, uh, also known as RAM that you'd normally find in a laptop. And I tried searching for the same 3200 MHz ones online, uh, but it's not as easy to find as I initially thought. And sure, there is a PCI Express slot that Huawei says can support a graphics card, but in a case this slim, you know, I'm having trouble thinking of a GPU that can fit. Also, how am I going to power it? Like, I don't see any extra cables coming up from the 300 watt proprietary power supply. The only easy upgrade that I can really see like a novice like me doing to this device is like adding a second M.2 drive to expand storage. But then again, that also reminds me a lot more of like the kind of upgrades you make for a laptop, not a desktop. Of course, being a lot like a laptop isn't necessarily a bad thing. I, for one, really like how dead silent the Mate Station S is. And Huawei's done a good job with the fan setup because even with it like right by my ear, this thing doesn't make a whisper. It's also an incredibly easy setup process. You hook up the cables and you're good to go. No faffing about necessary. It's basically plug and play. 
And let's not forget that this is a tiny system. It's small and narrow, so it would take up almost no desk space. Plus, it's got a pretty understated design, so there's no abing RGB to blind you. With the keyboard, Huawei has also included support for their one-tap Huawei Share feature. So with a Huawei smartphone, one that's compatible, you can just tap it on the shift key of the keyboard and it will instantly cast your device to the PC. You can also multi-screen and access all of your apps from the PC, so it's really quite useful. But you know what else has all of these features? A laptop. In fact, Huawei's very own MateBook, uh, well, they have all these features and more. Uh, in fact, we like the MateBook so much that we actually bought two of them for use in our office with our own money. And with a laptop like the MateBook, you can also hook up a monitor, a keyboard, and a mouse and use it as like a desktop and get a very similar experience to what I got on the MateStation S. But you know what the difference is? With the Huawei MateBook or a laptop, you know, that comes with built-in speakers. This does not. Uh, that also comes with a built-in webcam. This does not. And if you want to, you can just unplug the laptop and take it with you on the go and use it on the train or whatever. Uh, but this one, cannot. So I guess that brings us to the final thing I haven't talked about, the price. I went online and tried to build a very similar system and honestly the cost plus Windows 10 didn't end up being too different from what this MateStation S retails for. So I guess it's a pretty good value. But the difference between this and a DIY PC is that with a DIY setup, you're a slave to parts availability. And if you're thinking of building a PC now, you'll know that we're facing an incredible amount of demand with next to no supply for parts. But you know, if all you need a PC for is just to do web browsing, a bit of word processing, uh, some content consumption like watching videos or Netflix, then why not just get a laptop, you know? Why not get this one, this MateBook D15? It has, you know, pretty good specs, it's got double the storage, and it also has all the benefits of being a laptop. Unless, of course, you really need like the extra power provided by the desktop grade uh, Ryzen 5 APU. Uh, but then again, I can't really speak on like how well this thing will perform under intensive situations because I haven't had enough time to, to use it uh, as like uh, for gaming and video editing and all of that. So if you want to know how this fares in those situations, then you'll have to stay for, uh, stay tuned for the full review. But yeah, those are my first impressions of the Huawei Mate Station S. Uh, I'm still struggling to find out who would buy this and who wouldn't just prefer like an iPad or a laptop. Uh, but you know, if you know or if you are, have your eye on this, let me know in the comments section below. I also want to remind everyone that, you know, when I say like a desktop, I mean like a DIY PC because that's, that's how I build all my home consumer grade desktops. So if you have like a different experience, uh, then you know, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below too. Before we go though, uh, I've got some comments to react to from the previous video. Uh, this comes from the uh, Redmi Note 10 unboxing, which in case you haven't watched that already, you should go and watch that. Uh, it's very interesting smartphones. Probably the best smartphone to buy for about a thousand ringgit. So uh, let's see whose comment is interesting. Okay, Hunwei says, Whoa, 4K video? SC, you guys are fancy. Hello, what you mean? How many of our videos 4K already? Dude, this is, not, this is not a new update. This has always been 4K. I think the only ones are like the ones that Ray edits, so like Ichimi, that's Full HD. But pretty much the rest of it is all uh, 4K. So Nicholas Lam says, he forgot to mention this both phone have IP53 equals dust and splash protection. Okay, disclaimer here, uh, unless a smartphone has IP67 and above, uh, that means six for the dust and seven for water, I'm not gonna mention it as having any kind of splash or water resistance because, you know, IP53, like I, if I say that, it might lull people into like a false sense of security because at a rating of IP53, it's like, you should treat your phone as basically not having water resistance because any more would be like super dangerous. So yeah, that's the disclaimer. Okay, so Fufu Yaya says, well, at least you got 1 to 8 GB below 1,000 ringgit. Yeah, good value, good value smartphone. Redmi Note 10 Pro, probably the best phone under 1,000 or around 1,000. Even the 1099 one is like, it's good, like, good specs. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much for um, leaving comments on the videos. If you want me to respond to the, your comments or your interesting comments for this video, make sure you leave them now. Leave them all down below, okay? Very good. Okay, I'll see you in the next one. Uh, don't oh, I forgot to tell you to subscribe and like.
don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on the notification bell icon. And uh, like us on Facebook, you can also find us at our home on the internet at surgeonshow.com. <laughs> I'm Rory and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.